Thank you so much, TJ. Good evening, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. We will call this Tuesday, January 19th, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Please allow me to start with roll call with our Board of Commissioners. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, I, I, I hear you. Okay. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, present. Board of Commissioners, we have a quorum. Board of Commissioners, I wanted to announce that tonight that our clerk has notified me that the votes cast for the order of business tonight will be made available uh, on the screen uh, for the public's viewing. So just wanted to make you aware of that as well. Tonight, Board of Commissioners, we have the pleasure of having uh, Pastor Robert, L., uh, Robert S. King, uh, Golden Memorial United Methodist Church. He is the pastor there, and he's here to render the invocation this evening for us, and we're very delighted. Uh, and after the invocation, Board of Commissioners, I ask that you join me in the pledge to the flag. With no further ado, Pastor King, you have the floor. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. <clears throat> Grace and peace, uh, beautiful people, the uh, Douglas County Board of Commissioners, as well as all citizens. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. It is a day that you have made. We rejoice. We're glad in it. We are grateful, God, for one more opportunity to love and serve you by loving and serving our neighbors. So, God, we give you thanks for this meeting and this gathering of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. God, we praise you for all of the commissioners, all their staff, all the citizens, and all those who live and work and serve in our community. And we, God, just give you thanks for the work that they do to protect, to serve, to provide that God all might live and flourish in our community. We pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit would fall fresh, oh God, on our time tonight, that it would be full of your presence, uh, that God, there would be a common spirit as the work is being done to serve and provide, uh, that God leadership might be offered that would bring blessing to our community. And that God, uh, through the work of this team and all their staff and all the leaders in our community, that your kingdom values of love and mercy and justice and kindness and provision might reign not only in our community, but through it to the ends of the earth. These things I pray in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor King. Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, if you could please join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, for all. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners and citizens. And thank you again, uh, Pastor King, for rendering such a powerful message and a prayer tonight. Prayer changes things, and I wholeheartedly believe that, and I appreciate you being here tonight. Public comment. Clerk, do we have anyone sign up for public comment? We did not have anyone to register tonight, um, but I could ask if there's any citizens that are signed on that would like to comment if it's pertaining to the agenda and only if it's pertaining to the agenda. Are there any citizens out there that would like to speak on an agenda item tonight? Okay, Chairman, um, I'll give it back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk Watson. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right into the approval of our minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the commission meeting minutes of January 5th, 2021. You have the work session minutes uh, of January 14th, 2021, and the executive session minutes of January 4th, 2021. Are there, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections that need to be made? Board of Commissioners? Okay. Okay, if there's no additions or corrections or deletions that need to be made, the minutes stand as approved. We're going to move on, Board of Commissioners, to a new business. Well, before we move on into, before I get into the, uh, the the agenda, I wanted to make a note, Board of Commissioners, at your pleasure. I would like to table number seven, uh, number seven, which is uh, the it, it's the authorization to approve a contract extension with Sperian for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, um, at the uh, request of the sheriff's 
um, at Sheriff Pounds, uh, I would like to ask, he would certainly like to engage in further negotiations with Spirian, Spirian regarding the terms of this particular item. And I would like to bring it back to this board uh, on our next, uh, on our fourth, at our forthcoming meeting. So if, if it's your pleasure, I would like to call for a motion to table this item. So move, Madam Chair. Okay. Make a motion. Down. Okay, we have a we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. District four. Commissioner Guider, you may be on mute. Lisa, did she drop off by any chance? Ch Chairman, yes. And District 4? I still see her on there. I'm sorry, I had to walk away. Um, what are we voting on? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm tabling uh, number seven. Oh, okay. I heard that part. Uh, yes. Thank okay. you. We Sorry. Have five, oh, no. Okay. Understood. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Uh, thank you so much, and we will table this item until our next meeting. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we're going to uh, dive right into our new business items, which is tab number four appointment of Nick Slappy and reappointment of Chandran Pem Pemberton to the uh, Douglas County Development Authority effective February 1st, 2021. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second in the discussion. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right on to tab number five, which is a business item, which is approval of the memorandum of agreement with Cobb and Douglas Public Health for COVID-19 response funding and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Before we start, I would like uh, legal, if they could, uh, Attorney Bernard, if you could just weigh in uh, regarding there were just a few slight changes as per discussed in our last meeting, but I want to make sure that those changes stood firm with uh, you had an opportunity to discuss just those minor changes with our uh, cop Douglas Public Health Deputy Director. Are you there, Attorney Bernard, yes. to call for a motion? Yes, Madam Chair. I think the only thing that changed, Madam Chair, at the pleasure based on the comments and with the administration's direction, we changed item four. Y'all had previously set aside up to 1.5 million. We still only have 1 million in this contract, but the new reading encompasses the potential for the additional 500,000, and it reads this way. Under uh, paragraph four was changed, the county's obligation, the county agrees to pay CDPH an amount up to $1 million as approved by the county on a reimbursable basis. Should there be additional need for funding, the county has set aside up to an additional $500,000 for the scope of work herein, which may be released upon approval by the county. If approved, the additional funding shall be subject to reimbursement as provided herein. So essentially, it's everything we said at the work session, still a million, up to a $1 million, Y'all have identified the other 500 you've set aside, and there's a method for them to come back to you and ask for that money. And if it's agreed to by y'all, then it'll be released on a reimbursable basis as provided in the document. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Attorney Bernard. It's my understanding that the uh, deputy, this conversation was held with the deputy director and she was fine with it. Okay. All right, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? the approval of the memorandum or, or agree, of agreement with Cobb and Douglas Public Health for COVID-19 response funding. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. 
Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Robinson? Yes, I'll be very quick. Um, I don't recall, but perhaps the administration has the answer to the, the following questions. Um, we, we said this, this, the first roughly 400,000 to 500,000 was for, for uh, money that had already been incurred or expended between what, July and December 31st, 2020. Something there about, or no problem. That's the first 500,000. The second $500,000 was, was geared toward getting, what well, I wanna say, a shot ready. We were very specific about our, our objectives during that period of time, which is, okay, we wanted shots in arms. We recognized that there was some, some work that needed to be done, maybe some operational, et cetera, but we, we wanted to make sure that, that that was our priority. My question is, is what has the money, that, that million dollars, um, we, we hired some epidemiology like that. My question is, have you received the report so far? How many people in Douglas County have gotten shots? Has our um, EMS director gotten his shot on his um, I looked at a town hall last week and they're saying that we're two weeks behind and the application had failed and he had, and, and he needed to go over to Cobb to get a shot. I'm like, wait a minute. It was only acceptable to me for that, but I'm, I'm looking for, I'm wanting my peers, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for like, okay, are we getting out of this that we said we were due? We committed to the public health that we're like, we're all in. But I just, I'm not feeling the, like, well, how does Mr. Will Holland be in the position that he's in? That was last week. Now, I don't know what's happened since then, but I didn't forget that. Um, in, in the sense that, wait, wait, you're going to go, you telling my director, of, of, uh, Mr. Jima, that he got his, him and his crew got to go volunteer over in Cobb uh, after they get a shot? So, do we have any data on how many people in Douglas County has gotten shots? Period. That's the first question. The second question was, can they answer the question for, uh, we had talked about the cooler. Um, and so we, we, we thought that was important. Okay, we need to pay for our own cooler. It's my understanding that the Moderma, whatever it's called, that's what we're getting, it may not require the cooler. Well, where the money at? Did we return the cooler? Did we get the cooler? Was it ordered? That's the second question. And third question, again, I, again, I was just looking for a little bit more have you, Madam Chair, received any more additional information on um, how ready they really are? Now, again, they represent the state. They're a state agency that, that gets local funding. And uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just feeling a certain kind of way when I see everything's going over to Cobb, and I'm like, okay, but what about Douglas? It's the same place we were with our testing. Like, okay, wh wh where's the commitment to us? I mean, we're putting real cash in. I mean, we, we only got five million, and Cobb got 85 million. So mm -hmm. Dollars matter. Can you answer that third question? So, is anybody on the line? It's not you, Madam Chair. Is anybody on the line that can answer those three questions? Yes, that, uh, Director Milholland, I see, is on the line, and I will ask him if he could just chime in. Uh, Director Milholland, could you respond to Commissioner Rob Robinson's questions, please? Yes, on, on the on the one on on the reason to it um, on the Cobb County. Okay, when we when we first um, uh, started trying to get the public safety folks um, vaccinated. The county, um, we filled out along with the fire, uh, myself, along with the fire department, filled out an application to, um, and put it in. And there was at the state level, there was an issue with our application, he, uh, we, and we could, were not able to order. So public health worked with us to be able to start. So we're not we were we were not able to start on our own ordering our vaccine. They moved vaccine over to the uh, and and to an authorized provider so we could start so we would not be held up. So that was actually a situation where the application we turned in at the state, there was some mishap at the state or whatever, whatever, wherever the mishap happened, but we could not order. So we'll work with, along with work with public health and, um, and also um, Cobb, Fire, Cobb, um, Cobb Fire, so we could start vaccinating over there. And we were able to get now get the, um, the, the paperwork fixed at the state where, um, and but in, in in the meantime, we started vaccinating here. Now we've been vaccinating the fire department. Um, I'm not sure what number we're at right now of actual um, vaccine vaccines we've done um, at the fire department uh, now. But that was from vaccine to actually public health transferred over to us, so we could start on our own. So that's kind of to give you a little background on that. That was the kind of situation 
um, with our, but, um, but I think they were, I know they were doing vaccinations today at the fire. Um, and I think we've got a good, a good many done so far with our, um, uh, with, uh, with our fire department and our sheriff's office and PD and 911. And I think we've had a uh, one or two from the coroner's office also. And, no, and you're fine. Thank, th thank you, Director Nola. And, and my comments were more advocacy for your, you and your office for all that you've done. I mean, you would be um, one of my nominations uh, for Employee of the Year. So am I, I'm coming from a position of advocacy, which is, well, I mean, it's only through GEMA uh, directors between these two, um, and Cobb, Douglas Public Health. Where was the support to help these guys get an application through? They're too busy out there in the pandemic. Where's my Cobb Douglas Public Health Board? Where, where, where are those people who are supposed to be providing oversight on for this? When we as legislators get, get involved, like, okay, now what are y'all doing? So I'm, I'm sure I, I got your director. I mean, I'm, I'm covering him in the sense like, no, he shouldn't have to go through that. I mean, do, 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 I mean, do you understand what they do? Now here we talk about fire, we hear about MS. Okay, well now this is when it really matters. So they're always fighting for us. Who's fighting for them? Who's putting the heat on those guys who sure that they, they're covered? And that's, and, and again, look what they're having to do. They, oh, they're gonna, we're gonna borrow some from Cobb and like, okay, we're gonna get this, but you gotta come over here and volunteer. I don't, I don't like that. This board sat here in goodwill, good faith, 5-0. We, we consumed it. I mean, we, we worked with every voice that was in the room to, to take it to a million, maybe up to a million five. Like, okay, we got it. And you had nine months and eight months to get this right. And all we asked for was like an application process to kick it off. And I'm just not feeling a certain kind of way. So I'm, I'm going to yield the floor because nobody else can answer the rest. I'm sure you don't have to extend an answer you may not have on this one. Um, because it, it um, I, I just I, I just think that we, 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 we deserve better than that. Um, I, I just see too much concentration over in Cobb. And I just, I mean, it's like a secondary thought. Oh, y'all got in trouble. Well, here you go. But then you're going to make me come work for you. Like, no, wrong generation. How, how you would handle Douglas County like that? Like, okay, I thought it was called mutual aid. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to yield the floor on this one to my peers, but I, I think this was too important to vote. I'm the one to ask for this to be taken off uh, and it needs to be voted on, on itself because I think this needs to be codified. They need to hear this. They need to be buried in some consent agenda. Like, this is, we're serious about this. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Robinson. Um, this, this, can I say one more? I, I, I do, do want to say, Commissioner Robinson, I appreciate your support. I, uh, I, I truly do. But I did want to say that, you know, I've worked a lot with um, Lisa Cross for Public Health, and she has really worked with me and supported me. I, I just want to make sure I didn't want anybody to think she she is not. So I did, I did want to say that, but I, I truly appreciate your support. It's good to know that I do have support. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Director Mahal, and also thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other discussion? Or yes. Uh -huh. yes Commissioner, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay. Just a quick question. So, uh, Ms. Crossman and, and and the team is okay with, from my understanding, what you stated. For I'm assuming you're speaking for these guys, correct? That's my first question. Well, yes, let me, and uh, certainly I can reiterate or, or, or just make sure we validate. I have Jennifer Moore on the line. She's worked directly with Elisa Crossman. So if you want to, to just reaffirmation, I could have her speak once you finish, Commissioner. Sure, have her speak first, and then I'll, I'll finish up on my sure. statement. Um, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Uh huh. Deputy Clerk, could you explain to Commissioner Mitchell in your paralegal status what you discussed with uh, Lisa Crossman just to verify? or this, this change was okay or not okay with her? Yes, ma'am. Um, last Friday night, I made the change. I, I talked with the chairman and Commissioner Carthen and um, our county attorney. We added the language and I sent it to um, Ms. Crossman and I asked if that addressed her concerns and did she feel comfortable with it? And she said that she did. I have an email. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so she, she was okay with coming back to this board, uh, making the request of the additional um, 500,000, correct? If I'm hearing you correctly. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I'll yield the floor. Okay, any other questions from the board or discussions? 
Okay, board, we have a motion and a second in place. We have a motion and second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. I'm gonna wait. I'm trying to get a little bit of information about a chair, so I'll okay. come back to you in just a second. Okay, district two. No. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District one. I'm, I'm not, no, I, since I, I'm waiting on some other information, I apologize, so I'll have to say no. Okay. And uh, Chairman, yes, we have a 3-2 vote and the motion carries. All right, we're going to move on to uh, our, I'm sorry, we already, I'm going to move next to the consent agenda, which is uh, tab number 6 through 11. Board of Commissioners, please be mindful that all items are subject to final legal review. Tab number six is authorization to approve the 2021 annual contract with the West Georgia Regional Library System for providing shared services in the amount of $40,000 in library materials, computers, and software in the amount of $150,000 for the Douglas County Public Libraries and total amount of $190,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number seven is authorization to approve a contract extension with Spirion, and we we moved that. That's been tabled, so disregard that. We're going to move to tab number eight. Tab number eight is authorization to renew agreement with Business Watch International BWI for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office for Rapid System Regional Automated Property Information Database, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending uh, final legal review. Tab number nine is approval of memorandum of understanding with the Douglas County Community Services Board for behavioral health and substance use services and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 10, approval of a memorandum of understanding with the Douglas County Community Services Board for veterans housing and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 11, resolute resolution to adopt the 2021 Douglas County state and federal legislative agenda. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any item before finalized? Commissioner Robinson, you Thank have you. a motion. Mm -hmm. is, is Director Lightford around? Is Ray Lightford, are you? out there yes. commissioner he's not on on the line do you have a particular question maybe i could re we could refer to our legal department if you had a question regarding the mou um yeah this was dealing with the veterans housing mm -hmm. uh, attorney bernard can you weigh in and please provide some more insight about this memorandum of understanding <clears throat> with community services board sure uh Commissioner Robinson, would you like me to proceed or you want me to wait for a question, sir? No, go ahead. What, give context to what this MOU is. Okay, this MOU uh, deals with homeless veterans suffering from behavioral health and substance use disorders. It's a targeted population. The county is agreeing to remit a sum up to 305000 to the CSB for veterans housing. This sum shall be paid in three installments. The first installment is 105 and will be paid after the execution of the MOU. A report from the CSB director or staff will be provided to the county in a form of a written report or verbal report if requested by the county. The report will detail the metrics of outcomes and findings. And upon once the report has been received, the second installment up to $100,000 will be remitted. Upon receipt of a written and or verbal report in the same manner uh, prescribed for the first uh, segment, CSB will receive a third and final installment of up to $100,000 to be remitted. This agreement is good from January, basically it's good through, um, excuse me, the term of the agreement is from January 121 and remitted, the funding is exhausted. It's intended to be exhausted over a period of 18 months, which is June 1, 2022. Uh, the CSB agrees to carry coverage and liability and identify the county and essentially you, you are using them as a pass-through for a targeted 
audience in order to provide uh, for their health and safety and welfare that based on a finding that it's appropriate by this board. Thank you for that. As a clarification, um, um, uh, County Attorney, is this for the acquisition of an asset or are we, what, is it, it we, I think there was a building in our property that was identified uh, based on what I recall the conversation. So for clarity, are we acquiring property or are we using this money to, to provide the services within that? I mean, do we, are we owning anything for this, this contribution? Uh, and I, I'm looking at it right now. Again, I got it in my hands. Unfortunately, I had the other one. I'm sorry. Um, Take your time. You're fine. Here's, here's what I have on it in the agreement, the model overview, they, besides the targeted population, I just had, I think that they are rehabbing property that's being used to assist in the homeless population. And part of the overall goals of this is, uh, is to establish permanent housing in the community while providing for safe and st safety of staff and residents in the transition. So, the overview says low demand houses, housing using a high end engagement, high reduction model to better accommodate chronically homeless yes. veterans who were unsuccessful in their traditional treatment settings. So I do think they are rehabbing property. I'm not aware that we are actually owning something, but the po projects, I think the outcome is dealing with uh, rehab of the veterans village is what is defined in the agreement. It does include uh, the lot of funds for renovations, construction, staffing, rehab of Douglas County Veterans Village located at 6155 Cooper Street, Douglasville, Georgia 30134. Some of the actions items include, but are not limited to replacing the roofing, siding, HVAC units, windows, and appliances, as well as painting the interior landscape and installing gutters. That's not an exhaustive list, and they're doing quarterly evaluations and some other modeling. Uh, as far as the ownership, I'm not sure that I know the answer to that specific question, Commissioner Robinson, but the targeted location is identified in the agreement. All right, now, you've answered my question, and thank, thank you, County Attorney. Um, I'll, I'll just make my statement that I, um, obviously I support um, all accountability courts and from day one back in 15, we first wrote out drug and DUI, mental health, and now we're on the fourth prong, which is obviously uh, mental uh, help dealing with our veterans. So I'm for this, um, uh, obviously during the budgeting process, we, we had appropriated some money that didn't make it through the process uh, for our judges to facilitate this, they weren't ready. Um, but Director uh, Leifert was prepared with his CSB um, function um, in which we um, reappropriated that money over to them. But this is part of the COVID process, uh, that part of the budgeting. So my question, it still comes back to, but. I'm rehab, I'm giving money to an entity. And it just is yes or no. So county attorney, I can, the, the board of commissioners can appropriate money to this 501C, whatever it is, CSB, and they can use that money to rehab a property that we don't own. And I wanna know who owns it. I mean, again, I'm, I'm improving the value of an asset and I have no control over it. Think about it. Am I buying it and I'm rehabbing it? Or am I, or is there some type of pre-existing that, that deals with well, what's on the other side of this? What's on the other side? Now, if it's just for services, I get it. I mean, that's, that's what they're in the business for. I have no problem with it, but it, it's, it's really a transactional question. County attorney would like, okay, now, are we rehabbing something that we're improving the, uh, somebody else's asset? I get it. Do we know what we're doing here? Do, do, are we aware that what we're about to do is that we're going to improve somebody else's capital asset? And if it's another 501c6 or three and they're out there and it's some big community service, we're going to work together. I've got no problem with it. I just want, I, I mean, I just picked up on that. And obviously the answer is not being able to be answered. And so um, this is not to the county attorney, but Madam Chair, I think that any director, anybody who presents to us, they have to be here 
um, you know, beyond ext extenuating service that they have to be here to defend um, in moments like this. So I, I, this is not for the county attorney alone in, in this moment. But Ken, you got any light on that regarding, um, yeah. Well, I, I, from my reading of this, and you know, we worked on the legal words. We didn't work on the negotiations and whatever we got from Ray. Others have been involved, including your predecessors in the county administrator's office. But I understand this to be a CSB-owned entity that y'all are agreeing that part of your finding that this benefits the public health, safety, and welfare is attending to this designated population and that your funds are being used to rehab for that purpose i understand from reading this that you do not own the property and so you have to make a finding when you're uh, uh, improving something that in benefits the public welfare safety of the community etc it can't just be for you couldn't go build this at one person's house that would be a problem but the csb is a pass-through designated entity serving the community and you have to make a finding before you spend these funds that this is an appropriate expenditure to serve uh, uh, a your population so I, I don't have any reason to believe we own the property that's being uh, rehabbed I understand that the CSB owns it or has uh, control over the property now, that's part I didn't like you got to it. So it's not necessarily the board commissions, but CSB does own this property. So I'm going to take it at face value. I'm, I'm hearing you tell me that they do own it or has majority control of it. And so I'm going to render my decision based on that being submitted now. Okay, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that because I don't know, but I, I understand that from the dialogue concerning what went in here. Have I checked the title? I have not. We, we have not checked the title. Okay. Do we know the county attorney? We're good. I'm sure I've got to yield the floor for my peers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Any other questions for the commissioners regarding consent agenda? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh huh. Commissioner uh, Carpenter. Is Director Lindy Moore available uh, in regards to consent agenda item number six? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> great, great. Uh, my, my question to you uh, is in regards to um, item number six. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the forty thousand and the and the additional one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, what that provides for? And then I'll get into uh, our side our side fingers crossed project um, that that we hope will happen off of Chapel Hill. But this is just to kind of prime that. <laughs> Okay, the 40,000 is for shared services. Um, that's cataloging um, extension services between the schools um, from the regional library standpoint. It's for um, providing our software and our all of our operating um, items on the regional end. The 150,000 is for our books and materials that um, we, all of our, um, materials go through the headquarters library for them to process and catalog and then they ship them to us and that's how we get them to put on the shelf so this is our annual contract um, between the library system and um, Douglas County okay and that goes between all the libraries how many do we have in the county and can you tell we me which districts <laughs> yes we currently have three libraries um, Douglas the Douglasville location on Selman Drive, I believe that is District 2. Um, Rithia Springs, that's District 1. And Dog River is District 4. Got you. So the three libraries that we have, this is um, going towards all of those libraries. If we brought another library online, this would also, with, with this amount, of funds do you think would change? Is it, is it based on our population or is it just based on the number of libraries we have? Do you know? The um, 40,000 is based on population um, okay. and need. So that would increase um, depending on um, what, that would change a little bit because of population and the demand that we would need for services through the region. Um, and the 150,000 that would need to increase as well um, 
to provide materials um, for that for a new library as well. For a new library, okay. And we do have on the agenda as well, our um, legislative agenda resolution that we're adopting. And I don't know if you know this, but in that I do have the um, um, us asking our delegation to advocate for another library in this district. So hopefully those state funds would be available. Hopefully they can advocate for us and, and we would get those state funds. Do you believe in your opinion that would be warranted for us to get another library? Oh, yes, definitely. There is um, the other, the Chapel Hill part of the county. We see lots of patrons coming to us from that area, but there's also a large um, percentage that are not being reached with our current services. Got you. So there is a need and hopefully just like we kept advocating for a driver's services division to come, we, we are in the in the process of, of getting that in the county. Hopefully this will come about too. So um, again, you you have said that there is a need and I know you have worked on the application with me. So, so we know that that is in queue. I'm just wanting to ensure my board of commissioners that, you know, as we move forward and things come up that the need is there. Um, not only for the district, but just for, for Douglas County uh, in hopes that we would have a, a, a nice library, a library headquarters that you and the staff would be able to utilize, would you say? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. The things that we um, would hope to see in this new library are not currently, those needs are not currently being met in our other um, three facilities. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for all that you're doing. And um, we see you pushing out things on social media in regards to all of the resources that you have at the library. And so I appreciate you. Please keep it up and thank you. Thank With you. that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Board of Commissioners, any other discussion? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. For you, Madam Chair. If it, if it, uh -huh. Yeah, the, um, the it may be perhaps um, Jennifer Moore is available um, to that point about our legislative agenda, the resolution that we're passing. Can she speak um, just what is in that legislative agenda resolution that we're passing and how that ties to the General Assembly that just came back? Like, what does this mean? Can she tie the two together? Um, just a general statement. It's a, it's a softball of law for her. I know she can do it. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, Jennifer Moore, you have the floor. Um, mm -hmm. I've not been, I apologize, I've not been involved in drafting of that resolution and the, the legislative agenda. I believe that that was uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Mm -hmm. Tiffany's out today. Could you cover that for us? Um, can you speak to it? I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have it pulled up. Okay. Attorney Bernard, do you by any chance have it in your queue that you can discuss it with the board? I would simply be reading somebody else's stuff, Madam Chair. I, I don't know anything about it. Okay. Board of Commissioners, you do know this is the uh, legislative uh, agenda that Tiffany Stewart Standard brings forth every year when we meet with our de uh, delegation, state delegation, and all the items that we discuss and uh, the, the particulars that you all uh, we usually speak individually and then we speak collectively about some of the things that we want to see occur in the county. Uh, Douglas County and, and we're asked that we are asking our state delegation to push our agenda forward and they have demonstrated that certainly with the DDS and other items that we requested requested in the past. Tiffany has a resolution but due to a family emergency she's not able uh, to actually be here tonight but certainly you have that that resolution should be in your boxes and if you have questions uh, we'll be more happy we will be happy to discuss uh, your questions, uh, if that's okay with you, Commissioner Robinson, uh, at a later date regarding the resolution. No, move forward as is, Madam Chair. It's been very clear. Thanks. I'm good. Okay. All right. If we don't have any dis other discussion, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your district, please uh, vote accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes, ma'am. District 3? Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners, we're moving on now to the approval of the expenses. Um, we Do we have a motion to approve the expenses? So moved. Do we have a second? 
Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Yes, okay, Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, there were uh, some of the expenses, the receipts and everything are incomplete. Uh, so it's hard to vote on something that you don't know what they're for. Or they don't make sense uh, in some cases. So uh, could we table this for uh, till the next meeting and allow the commissioners uh, to get their receipts in order? This is for a paper trail that aud auditors require and um, just a receipt for an item does not, unless you have the purpose of spending that money or uh, who it went to, you, you don't have a paper trail. This is just a 101 accounting. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to table it until the receipts are uh, corrected or supplied. Do we have a second to table? Second. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. just just a point of order for purpose of Robert's rules: a motion to suspend further consideration or table something is not debatable. It it, it does take precedence over the main motion, and it would require a vote by a majority of this board. So you now are if you have a motion to table. Technically speaking, uh, it's not a debatable motion under Robert's rules of order. I just point that out for your next step. Are you are you indicating can can we go forward? Yeah, I mean you take a vote okay. unless you unless you want to okay somehow, somehow open up a debate on it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And board, I I have some uh, just a slight discussion since I'm in the discussion point had an opportunity to meet with our chief financial advisor and certainly he brought up a good point. I really, we really don't have a real uh, uh, check and balance, uh, airtight check and balance system in place. And that's something that uh, I also, and I'm quite sure this board uh, would like to see going forward with regard to our receipts and, uh, and also our expenses because we're not in investigators of each other's receipts. Uh, actually, we We've, this, we've been doing well on the honor system, and I trust all of us. But again, uh, with auditing uh, pr principles and procedures in place, uh, certainly it, it's hard for us to define uh, our process right now when we don't have one. So at the pleasure of the board, I hope you're okay with just, uh, if you would, allow this to be tabled. Uh, David Corbin, uh, who's our chief financial advisor, is going to work with me on uh, just looking at a process so we can have something because what we're doing, these these expenses are coming to the Board of Commissioners first instead of going to our finance team or uh, uh, an entity where they can be vetted and then come to us for approval, which really makes sense. So this is just another element of uh, government that needs a check and balance uh, procedure in place. And if it's at your pleasure, I would greatly, uh, uh, I would thank you if you would allow us to do that. Is, uh, David Corbin, are you on Chief Financial Officer, Advisor? Oh, uh, Madam Chair, I am on. Yeah. If you can just to, to no, our Chair, process. Madam no, Chair, just a, we're, we're in discussion, right? Okay, okay, then David, we'll, 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 okay. okay, that's no problem. All right, that, that's my discussion. Any other discussion from the board? Commissioner Carthen, I see your camera popped on. Okay. Yes, um, I'm not sure where, where this is coming from, um, it, could we maybe get some clarity as to where this, this is coming from? Because ethically, I think we all have taken a, a, you know, an oath and we know that we each have $300 to spend within the, the county, right? And so some of us don't charge the gas to come up and sign the, the documents, or we don't charge to go to HOA meetings, or we don't charge you know, to meet with citizens at the library or wherever we meet, we don't do that. But we, we, we believe that, you know, others who have the right to do so, you know, choose to do so. I, for one, think that doing that is just a part of 
my job, so I would not charge the county for that. However, if we're doing a program or we're doing something um, that benefits the entire county um, within um, uh, Douglas County, then that's something that you know we 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 would be able to uh, to recoup. I know in the past before uh, we received our credit cards, we were doing everything out of pocket and then asking for reimbursement. And that was also on the honor and, um, and ethical um, upside of things. So I'm just curious as to where this um, would come from. But I am in agreement with you in regards to maybe making something um, more concrete um, around um, those charges, but uh, you yeah. know, I would like to see what our finance director um, comes back with uh, in regards to that. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Any other discussion from the board? Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, and the, please, please allow me to weigh in. Um, you know, we, we do have policies in place for anything less than $20. You don't have to have a receipt. Uh, when you talk about the purpose of meeting with people, you don't have to list a laundry list of people that you meet with. Right, you have inherent controls built in, right? That I, we, I can only speak to where I think this is coming from. Vote no against it if you want to. You don't have to table it. Just vote no. Right? Vote no. Right? I mean, this, this, this is um, no. This is this, this is wrong. This is from a wrong place. The spirit's wrong. Right. One more time, this is about control, right? The, 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 the spirit in which the comments are coming, it, it's, it's not of God. It's not right. Um, it, it's like, it, it, it's, it's just a veiled attempt to try to separate um, or deny access to, to citizens because their voice is being given. I won't come into this new year continuing with, with veiled, like we're wasting time, right? If there's, a, if there's a real problem, then create the policy to tighten it up, right? That it's like all of a sudden, like this is new, right? I'm, I'm speaking to the spirit that believes that, that, that this is some kind of way out of war, right? It, this, it, it, it is honor, right? And so I, I, I think we'll come correct right now. This is on the table. If you get the motion to, to table it, great. If not, then just come back later. But Absolutely. never have we ever tabled expenses. You just vote no. We're all sovereign and independent. Take your own position, move it forward. But 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 don't 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 be disingenuous in what the intent is. That we need to move on beyond. I use floor. Thanks, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other discussion? Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair. Commissioner Guider. Okay, <laughs> uh, this is not mean spirited. If you have a receipt for gift cards and it doesn't say who the gift cards go to or what purpose they were given, it's not given to a 501c3, uh, that's incomplete paperwork. Uh, when we, uh, or if you have a um, taxi driver uh, receipt from home to home or home to invalid, that is that's just not good paperwork. <laughs> and when we vote, when all of us have to vote on these, we're rubber stamping uh, inadequate paperwork. Um, I've been an accountant for a long time. It's just a matter of the proper paperwork. That's why I ask that it be tabled to allow a little bit more input from the commissioners that this uh, is um, some of the expenses for them. Um, we, this is not our money. Uh, this is taxpayer money. And uh, taxpayers are questioning a lot of these expenses. So we need to be transparent. We need to satisfy their uh, their questions about some of it. So um, just tabling it and giving the, uh, the parties opportunity to just correct their paperwork 
it's a different matter. So uh, I don't know why the personal attacks. So anyway, I yield back. Chairman Jones. Yes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Yes, Commissioner Carton. Um, I'm not quite sure where Commissioner Guider is getting that from. All of the paperwork was submitted for the CVS gift cards. They were given to CVS for the senior prescription program. And so, and that was vetted through the CVS uh, pharmacy, the CVS manager, and the other partners for the senior prescription program. Not only that, our senior secretary, Sherry, has what it's for. And not only that, not to just toot my own horn, but I will since we're on the subject, ACCG actually highlighted my senior health initiative prescription program that we did for the month of December for the seniors in Douglas County who are actually able to get um, those benefits. We actually gave out um, $1,250 through partnerships for senior prescriptions to help them during the, the December um, Christmas holiday. So, um, you know, I'm not quite sure where Commissioner Guider is getting that from. Maybe she didn't read all of the paperwork. Maybe she didn't get the ACCG local land. She didn't read that. Maybe she doesn't get my newsletter and she doesn't know what I'm doing, but uh, that's not my fault. Um, I always dot my I's and cross my T's to make sure that we're doing what is above reproach and what is ethically right. So I'm not sure what other paperwork she her her eyes would, would need but i just wanted to let you and the other board of commissioners know and as well as the constituents and for those constituents who actually were able to take advantage of that you know i hope that it did um, do you some good and alleviate um, some of the burden of your prescriptions during the month of december and i hope to be doing other initiatives and other programs in the coming months thank you chairman jones yeah, and, and Madam Chair, allow me to respond again when you talk about home to home. And uh, of course, you, you may have an aborted taxi. For example, I started out a day early to go to our, um, our tennis center um, at the community um, up at uh, Deerlook. And, and Commissioner Mitchell's like, well, where are you going? It's not until the next day. And I got there, so I had to go back home. So it's a home to home. Like, I, I think I, while I appreciate the scrutiny, I do appreciate it vote it down. There's an accounting for everything. So while you're saying that's wrong, like what well, you can go from home to home. It's allowed. Oops, the meeting the next day. Oops, there's an emergency. Oops. So, but to stop this right now, it's like, okay, vote it down. But if there's something else that needs to be clarified, so just because you may question it, I mean, everything absolutely is questionable. Everything is questionable. Not everything is legal, ethical, or moral, right? We know the test. But I think that right now it's like, okay, just vote no and, and move on. And so I, I, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, just one, Madam Chair. I'm just, I'm, I am just curious. Mm -hmm. And I'm only speaking from history. Not that anybody has done anything uh, not that's not correct in any expense, um, but I can only speak for Commissioner Mitchell. These are all valid. However, I'm a little baffled because each one of the commissioners, to include myself, will have to answer to the general public in the event that there's some incorrect uh, things that may be going on within our expense account. That's something that. I don't know, maybe, Ken, you might want to speak to this, that that will be the responsibility and the accounting and or of that individual commissioner. I, I, I mean, now, I'm not saying that we, we probably could put some even better policies, but what's in play has always been, I thought, pretty well stated. I'm glad now that we don't have to be reimbursed with the credit card situation so I'm I, I think that's that's great that we've done that scenario but each individual from my knowledge each individual commissioner is responsible for his or her expenses now if he or, or, or if either of the two decide not to turn in their their paperwork I guess if you call it that's something they'll have to deal with I just don't uh, do it that way. I prefer to turn in every piece of slip of paper that goes along with whatever event and whatever that is that I'm doing and whatever I purchased and what it what is it accounted for. 
So um, I don't think I don't think this is warranted. I think working on a policy, if you so choose, is great, but trying to say what somebody did or didn't do, or home or not home, or whatever gift cards that may be given out. I think that's up to that individual commission, and he or she will have to explain that or provide the information that's needed on that. That's just my take on it. So, Ken, let me ask you this, though, Ken, and, and I don't want you to what's, – what's been the past uh, take on expenses? Who and, and and who account for them, which I was understanding, my understanding is the commissioner itself. Um, help me to understand that, Ken, if, if you can. I'll, I'll try, uh, Commissioner. Um, sep separated, there's two separate issues, I guess. The first issue deals with the responsibility of the reporting person, whether it's requesting a reimbursement, et cetera, both under state law and uh, ethics, and that's been mentioned already by, during this discussion. The, the, the second piece of that is any requirements of finance for purposes of audit, because part of y'all's job uh, as commissioners is making sure that the finance structure of the county, as far as audit proof, is safe. And so what I don't know what the requirements are. Maybe if Jennifer Hallman is on the line, she can be more verse on that or david if he is on the line uh, and and then lastly uh, i guess for summation is this uh y'all's y'all's expense y'all's expenses and i'm not get, i have not reviewed any of these so i'm not talking about any of the specifics today or any day but y'all's expenses generally has been very broadly written the original code of up to $300, I think it was changed, and at some point it goes to $500 in, in county. Uh, and then whatever the actual cost is out of county when approved by this body has been left to pretty much, it, it's not scoped out. There's no rules that have been set forth it, it specifically identifying what can you spend, what can't you spend. There's been questions that pop up from time to time but ultimately, if this board wants to tap that down, it needs to promulgate rules uh, that do so. I, I would just be cautious, and I don't want to comment on any specific thing, that you have to be cautious separate from the expense reimbursement is what is the underlying spent, expense for? Is it for a lawful purpose? Presuming it is, and it could even, candidly, it could be morally or it could be a very good cause but you also have to worry about the gratuities clause of the Constitution because you can't give specifics to one set or one person and it not be broadly provided on a finding by this board of whatever. But to answer your underlying question, Commissioner, right now, uh, no matter what we say the expenses are, they are subject to approval of this body. And this body, historically, and not just this administration, prior administrations, uh, you know, subject except for the audit function of finance, I'm not sure there are good rules prescribing what that is or isn't. I'll give you an example. Uh, there are minimum requirements of commissioners under Georgia law, what's expected of the job. This commission expects more of their jobs. Is there anything under home rule that prohibits that? Not necessarily. But in, in, if the board is going to expand its functions, you will always run into these questions individually until you address it by what I think was described by David Corbin is, you know, addressing some rule structure. Uh, but I hope that answered your question. I'm not an expert on the expenses. I can tell you what your local legislation says. I can tell you what your, your duty as a commissioner is. I can't tell you about the audit function and, and how it gets vetted, if at all, through finance. Thank you kindly, sir. Okay, well, I will leave it there and um, I'll yield the floor back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Uh, David Corbin, if you could weigh in and then we're gonna move on. Um, you just like Ken just weighed in. Can you talk about some of those auditing um, uh, procedures, if any, 
Um, well, well, look, good, good evening, everyone. And, and so I think Ken uh, appropriately summed up the discussion. Again, not having looked at any of the expenses, the question I had was, what is the process? Historically, what's been the process? And is there a policy or is there something in place that, you know, again, when we get into an audit process, we have to benchmark it against what's been done or not been done. And so in the absence of that, my comment was, well, what is the process? And if there isn't a process, you know, does one need to be put in place from the auditing perspective in terms of what does finance need to be able to, to, to adequately provide to, to the auditors at the end of the day? And if that's a receipt or whatever documentation it is subject to what policies are in place, then we'll have to go ahead and put something like that. If it, and it may already exist, but again, um, County Attorney uh, Bernard just indicated that he wasn't aware of one. Um, I hadn't asked uh, uh, Finance Director Hallman whether or not there one there, there one exists either. So my my recommendation is again not related to the expenses that you have now, but again, is there a process that I can benchmark or is there something you know something that that I can look at that talks about the process. And if there's not, generally you should consider putting one together from an auditor's perspective. Um, so that, you know, somebody like myself or, or uh, Director Hallman are trying to decide, it's not for us to decide what's necessarily legal or not legal or good, but it's just the process in terms of if this, you know, again, assuming the expense is what it is, we've got to be able to substantiate um, not substantiate whether it's a valid expense, but just here's the, here's the supporting documentation related to any particular expense that's in the funds that are paid out by the county. That's all. And I'm okay, glad to try to answer any questions beyond that, but thank I don't you. have any more detail than that. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Corbin. I see Jennifer Hallman's hand raised, and then we're gonna, uh, would you like to add Director Hallman, and then we're gonna move on. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just to add a little bit to what David said, as far as a formal policy regarding specifically for the Board of Commissioners expenses, there is not one. Um, as far as the purchasing um, policies um, regarding expenses, there is a general one. But again, like I said, it's not specific to commissioner expenses. Uh, what we do in finance is um, we require receipts. Um, if there are uh, a lost receipt or no receipts given to us, then we usually go back to Sherry uh, over in the Board of Commissioner's office, and she tries to track down the receipt. Uh, depending on what type of expense it is, we then determine whether it's taxable or not um, and apply the appropriate tax law to that. As far as anything that may be questionable in the sense of, is this a valid expense? Um, as David said, I think a, a more a formal policy would help finance uh, not have to uh, do what we've done in the past is if there's something questionable, we're not quite sure if this is a um, valid expense, um, then we usually reached out to the uh, county administrator uh, via email um, or conversation, and he would either give us the yay or nay or reach out to Madam Chair for the, the direction. So that's the process in finance because the auditors, what they're looking for specifically is to make sure now that y'all are using credit cards uh, for these purchases, um, we treat that just like we treat any other credit card or uh, bill that we have to pay, we have to have a receipt. And um, that receipt is is our backup for the auditor so they can make sure that we paid what the um, credit card uh, statement uh, listed and there's uh, uh, receipts that uh, pertain to that credit card. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Director Hallman. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor regarding table and then we'll see, see how it goes. And then if we have to circle back to putting it back on the floor, we will. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. No. District two. No. District three. No. Okay, district four. Yes. 
Okay, Chairman of Stain. We have a three, um, three, one vote, and then we have one abstain. So the motion carries to not table the item. So we'll go back to the motion. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the expenses? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, yes. Chairman Jones. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, everybody. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Carthen, I heard you first. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Holloman, if you're still on the line, can you tell me if any of the, uh, did, did you all receive all of the receipts you needed and if any of those receipts were incorrect or not, uh, did not show you all what you needed for audited purposes? Not that I'm aware of because I specifically don't pay the credit card. Um, if there were any discrepancies or needed receipts um, from the, my staff that would need it, they would, again, reach out to either your legislative aid or could be Sherry to get the information needed. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure that this, you know, didn't fall on deaf ears, that we were getting in what was needed. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. if, if you could, Commissioner Carthen, could you just phrase the question to uh, our clerk, Lisa Watson, because she's the one that I believe track, if you could just give oh, her an okay. Lisa, can you respond to Commissioner Carthen? She want to know about everything. Can you respond to Commissioner uh, Carthen's question, please? Are you asking for your specific receipts and, and credit card statements? Yes. Was there yeah. anything that you did not get that you needed in order to um, to ensure that the credit card would be paid? Um, not on not on yours, ma'am. No. Okay. Well, thank we you. We did receive it. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, Madam Chair, just one. Okay. Uh, are you missing, Lisa, anything on Commissioner Mitchell? No, sir, not, a, not that I'm aware of. Okay, and just FYI, Madam Chair, you had a motion on the floor earlier that was a motion to second. So, I mean, I know that it may have gotten a little confusing, but that was an uh, amended motion that Commissioner Geiger made to table it. So, just FYI, okay. at least unless I missed something. Thank you for correct. Correcting yeah, I, I, I think the, the motion to table has already been handled 311, and you're now in the motion to approve the expenses. I get that, Ken. I would just only say, Chair and Madam Chair, that that was, that was an amended motion made. So the motion and second on the floor was earlier that was done that should have been followed by followed by that. That's all. I mean, nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, but the confusion was there was already a motion and a second on the floor. Then there was an amended motion to table it. Am I incorrect in that statement, Ken? The the motion to table is a set, is a primary motion that goes ahead of the pending motion. It's not an amendment. It's simply to table. That vote's already been had. Three one one. It, the the item failed. It's not being tabled. Now you're back to the main motion, which is a motion to approve the expenses. There's been motion and second, and you're in discussion right now. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, clerk, I have one question for you. I know that um, you said all the receipts, all the receipts, so everything was there. You, you're not missing any receipts. Is that what you're saying to? For specifically for Commissioner Carthen and Commissioner Mitchell. Okay. All we right. do have a few missing receipts from um, another commissioner. Okay, that's being addressed presently. So. Okay, we have a motion. Any other any Rule. other discussion, board of commissioners? Yeah. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh huh. Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, Lisa Watson, Director Watson. This morning, um, a correction was sent over to um, um, maybe um, you. As did that get updated in the Dropbox? From what I understand, there were still um, a couple of questions and a couple of receipts that were missing. Um, I will have to go back and check with Sherry Mathis. She was actually the one working on that. Yeah. But from the last I heard, there were still a couple she was um, working with Ruben on. We confirmed that that was clarified. We wanted to get updates. So my question to you was, did you update the, the Dropbox for what we did have? Is there a difference? 
In other words, the no, I, no, I sir. I was looking at something that's old. And it was updated today. Then there's going to be a difference. Yes, sir. And I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. the The reason I had not updated it was because I know that they were still waiting on a couple more. Yeah, we, we got them in. I'm sure I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion before going? We have a motion and a second. Uh, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Abstain. Okay, chairman abstain. So we have a three uh, vote. It's really a three zero vote and then two abstains and the motion carries to approve the expenses. All right, we're going to move on. Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. Yeah, okay. uh, pre pre uh -huh. so, so how does this work? So we voted for this. Mm -hmm. We can abstain against a position. So we carry somebody else's expenses, but they abstain from the position. Uh-huh. It, it's just sort of a, an observation, right? It, was there a real principle here? Right I, now, you know, we could have taken each one of them and voted individually, but we've always done historically, as, as Henry has pointed out, we've been consistent. We've been consistent from an audit perspective. I mean, if I go back and look at the, the, the accountant's auditor, look at the, the paperwork in the back of the book of the audit, when the auditor actually does go pull receipts, and you've never seen the Board of Commissioners be in a place of, 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 of missing something. Ever, ever. I mean, we can go now. You can look at that. You remember the auditor's report? How they say, "Well, this person doesn't do this. They don't keep up with this. The receipts, the ledger books, and so forth." So I, I just find it interesting that out of you, you may have one that may have been off, but it's not the end of the world. We're like, well, we got to put these processes in place. We got to like, okay, really, really, guys. And I, I think this was just a little too much. Uh, uh, you know, making a mountain out of molehill. It really is. It, it, it goes deeper than that. So I come back to, no, it's disingenuous. But OK, uh, again, you, we, we carried somebody else's report, right? But they abstained. How, how, how does that work? But you can. You're allowed. I yield. <laughs> OK. Thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. I want to make it very clear for the record that I'm uh, certainly, I, you know, I just want to speak on my behalf. I'm not being uh, disingenuous. I, of course, you know, we all report to the citizens and they are asking questions and sending barrages of emails to me. And if, if I can't just validate it, of course, I didn't vote it, no, but abstain because I can't really validate it. But I have never questioned any. And I told you, I trust this board. But at the same time, we don't, uh, but just by looking, this is just an opportunity for a process. And certainly I'm, I work directly with our financial advisor and also our director. And they certainly when they nudge me, so we just need a process in place. What's happening, we, we put in the cart before the horse. The board of commissioners are voting on all the uh, transactions first, and they haven't been vetted or looked at by our finance department. Uh, and that that's the, we, we, we kind of putting the cart before the horse and I would like to see it done just differently. Even if it goes to finance and then they send in and say, okay, let's move accordingly. And then certainly that'll just take that one step. It's just one step that's missing and now, and it should be easy. It's not going to be a lot of um, rhetoric behind it. I just want to just make sure we have a process in place where it goes to the bean counters first, or should I say our finance department first, so they can look at it and verify and then just send it to us and we will approve accordingly. So I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm not being uh, vicious, disingenuous. I'm just, just trying to keep, uh, keep, keep everything in a fair way and keep our records clean from for Chairman, Yes. I have a question. Does, uh, does the, the finance department vet our expenses? They use it. What happened? Yes, you remember Jennifer just said what happens when the receipts go over. They don't have the receipts. Then they'll call Sherry. So really, we've already been we've approved them, and they're actually looking for a receipt that may we've already approved. So it's we just missing one step. It should go to them first, so they can make sure all the receipts are in place. 
They have oh, everything. Okay. So yes. I just want to make they're sure I was us. understanding yeah, you. Problem. How did they do that? But they just, just to make sure that yeah, they, they just make the proper yeah. paperwork. Yeah, proper paperwork. Okay, that's got right. you. Okay, and I was so just making sure. Going on. Okay. They're calling sure. after the fact and saying we don't have the paperwork and then this board has already voted on it. That's yeah. what I'm just trying to do. And yeah. and it's certainly still clean, but we just, we're just we missing a step. We just need to right. allow them to verify all the paperwork. And then if there's some questions, they can just call and say, I'm missing a receipt and we can get that all taken care of and then we can approve accordingly. If that's yeah. okay with this board. Got you. So then we, we, we would be looking at making sure that we have in all our seats before it goes on to uh before it goes on to, to the agenda. So you would just make sure with Director Holloman that all the receipts for those expenses that we're voting on have been properly um, accounted for with receipts. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that's what we need to do. And that's what we have not been doing. That's what okay. we've been okay. voting in advance. That's all. Got you. And to and to your question, uh, Commissioner Robinson, not that we need to talk across here, but um, we we carry a lot in this board. You you have a lot of abstentions when when um, when it could just be a yes or a no. So we 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 carry a lot on here because people don't have the courage to vote what they know is right. So um, that's that's just me to you. Um, we that's historic in this for some reason. I believe your yes should be your yes, your no should be your no. You should be able to stand up and tell people why you voted the way that you voted. That's why people voted for you. They want to know that you can carry um, their voice. They want to know that you can advocate for them and they want to know that you can stand up for what you believe in, especially in regards to them. So to your question, Commissioner Robinson, yes, there are a lot of abstentions going on when there should not be. You only abstain when it is pertaining to you personally and you don't want it to be lawfully looked at as you being doing something nefarious. Um, so that's just me to you. Thank you, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. All right, Board of Commissioners, if there's no other discussion, we're gonna move on to our announcements. Uh, and certainly I will allow our Board of Commissioners to weigh in with their own particular announcements. So Commissioner Robinson, I believe you have some an announcement regarding how to do business with Douglas. Would you like to proceed? Sure, Madam Chair. Um, again, um, while this is not necessarily um, a, a District 2 only event, on Tuesday, no, Thursday, um, January 28th, um, 2021, at 6.30 virtually, we're having our fourth annual, I, I got left out the announcements, uh, again, paperwork, right? We, we miss things, right? It was important to emphasize the fourth annual, um, 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 what I'm going to say, doing business with Douglas. Um, this is something that was, was born out of a need. Um, last year, we were doing um, dealing with uh, everything from um, tourism and the need to expand um, and be more inclusive in Douglas County, um, a, a need to show those people who are traditionally uh, disadvantaged in Douglas County to say that Douglas County is open for business, whomever you may be, whether you're externally or internally. So on that day, we've got, um, I think his name is Chris Evans from GDOT coming out. This is dealing with the I-20 flyover. For those individuals who were looking at this big uh, flyover that's coming, GDOT is coming here to let it be known on how to get certified, how to get plugged into that. Eventually those packages for contracts will come down. Historically, less than 2% of all people in the state of Georgia get contracts who are a minority, a woman, disadvantaged or disabled. And so we're just trying to open up the doors for that, pushing that agenda to close that disparity that exists in this county historically. So on that day, we're gonna open up the floor. We're gonna have some guest speakers and stuff. Um, the state is sponsoring this. Um, they're saying, hey, we'd like to sort of push this because they know, the state understands there's been a historical disparity regarding contracts and procurement. And so we appreciate them coming for this and we'll continue to push that agenda. And uh, so you guys come on out at 6.30 to 8 o'clock on the 28th at 6.30. I'll learn more about this. Um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, external affairs is driving that. Mr. David Goods is gonna be one of our keynote speakers as well, talking about minorities in this county. And again, we're about to turn the page. We're, we are, we have turned the page and it's time to actually um, um, put up what we say that we're open for business and give people opportunities. So Madam Chair, I look forward to that. All citizens look out there on our website for this event. That'll be one every month I'll be putting out an event that I'll be doing that's open for the public. So please, um, please come on out. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other announcements from the board, um, board of commissioners before I proceed with the remaining two? Okay, being nine, it says Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County, American Red Cross 
is hosting a Douglas County Community Blood Drive on Thursday, January 28th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Hunter Park Community Center, Ballroom 8830 Gurley uh, Road is the address. Donors are asked to schedule an appointment prior to arriving at the drive and are required to wear a face covering or mask while at the drive in alignment with CDC uh, guidance. Visit Red Cross Blood Dot org, locate, find a drive, and enter the sponsor code DCCHC, or either you could call 1-800-733-2767 for questions. Next, uh, there's free COVID testing uh, still being offered at Deer Lake Park, uh, which is located at 2171 Mack Road, Douglasville, Georgia. drive through uh, testing is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. <clears throat> no appointment is necessary for information. For more information, please visit douglasvillecovid.com or call 678-909-4909. <clears throat> Board of Commissioners and also citizens of Douglas County, we are now 10 months into this coronavirus pandemic and over 400,000 citizens have died all over the United States and that number uh, hit, we hit that number today. Uh, please be mindful of the three W's, wash your hands, <clears throat> watch your social distancing, and please wear a mask. Director Valentin, are you on here so you could bring us up to speed with the uh, variable messaging boards? Are they available for the citizens coming off the interstates? If you could just clarify. Um, yes, Madam Chair, uh, we are in the process of uh, getting those uh, lined up and they will be uh, distributed throughout the county to alert everybody as to uh, the need and locations of where they can go get uh, the testing done. Uh, so that is something that is in process right now. Okay, thank you so much. And I want to also remind our citizens, those who are 65 years old and over, that the vaccine testing is in uh, progress right now. The Douglas County uh, <clears throat> uh, Cobb Douglas Public Center, which is located on Selma Drive, Selman Drive is uh, open and they are accepting appointments, but you have to have to go into the uh, virtual, not the virtual, but into the uh, automated system to uh, reserve an appointment. We are moving quickly towards a landing a mass location to allow mask, uh, uh, mass vac vaccinations to occur throughout the entire county. So just please be uh, on the lookout for that announcement real soon. But in the meantime, we still uh, just want to assure you, uh, citizens of Douglas County, that although we have the vaccination that is live and well in the United States and also in Douglas County, you still have to be mindful of the three W's. You have to wear your mask. That's just critical. Wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day and watch your social distancing. This again, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions, if we don't, uh, if we take this virus lightly, it will take us. So the shot is just an, an added layer, but we still want to, uh, the vaccination is an, an, an added layer of inoculation. But however, we still uh, want uh, myself and the public health experts ask that you continue to wear your mask. That is critical when in public. If there's nothing else to come before this board, this meeting is adjourned. So thank you so much Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. And I'm wishing you a very good night. Good night.